Well, hello and welcome to a new video. I have something exciting to do in this video. And of course you can read it in the title. I have a box here with baking supplies because I'm gonna try and attempt to bake my first um, giant cupcake for a cake smash session. Okay, so what I have here is this uh, baking shape for a giant cupcake. It's from Kitchen Craft. It's a jumbo cupcake pen. The size is approximately like 40 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 8 centimeters deep. So we've got the uh, cupcake shape. I also ordered some fondant uh, for the base and the decorations. I've got white and blue. Uh, and I ordered uh, some star like cutout shapes. And I ordered actually a cake leveler. And I'm super excited because I've never tried this before. My kids are helping me kind of. And they actually hope that the uh, cupcake will uh, not be so pretty so they can eat it and then we'll make an, another one and that will use that one for that so let's go okay so here we go okay so what i'm gonna do first is of course wash uh the shape i'm gonna put some gloves on put my hair up and then i'm gonna make the mixture and bake the cake first and then of course we're gonna go with the buttercream and like decorate it okay my kids are playing with lego so you might hear that in the background Anyway, so um, first I'm going to uh, grease up this uh, shape, of course. I actually have another video where my baker is making like a drip cake and a naked cake and she's explaining how to do it. So if you want to know how to make one of those cakes or you just want to have instructions from a professional baker, check out that video. I've never done this before. Uh, so here we go. For the cake batter, it's like a biscuit mix, so it's more like airy and fluffy. Okay, so for this exact shape, um, which they seems to be all pretty much the same size online. Um, they have like silicones ones and then this one, I just got this one. I'm gonna use 320 grams of this mixture, then five eggs and 32 grams of water. That's pretty specific, but I trust uh, what I found on the internet. Who doesn't? So they say when you have your mixture, you should put about like three and a half cups of your butter uh, in this bigger compartment, which is the bottom of the cake, and then two and a half cups of your batter uh, in the top. And then not to get them to rise too much, it's kind of like you bake them uh, step by step. So first that would mean like 25 minutes at 140 degrees Celsius then 20 minutes on 160 degrees celsius and then the last 10 minutes at 170 degrees celsius so you kind of have to stay close to the oven and put your timer and then change the temperature as you go that's how i'm going to try and do it today okay so let's go yeah Laten zien hoe ze zo'n taartje moeten maken. like a cup shape to get this out but I do have 
an ice cream scoop. So I'm just gonna divide it with that. So what I said before, let me just look it up, because I don't remember. Yeah, so about three and a half cup in the bottom and then two and a half cup in the top. Makes sense, just a little bit more better in the bottom than in the top. So I'm just gonna divide it. I'm gonna count and then I will see how far we'll get. So, of course, it's okay. I don't know how I'm gonna divide it. Okay, so we've got a scoop here and then a scoop on the other side. It's so fluffy. I love these kind of things. This is like to wipe out the bowl. I'm just gonna use that. So as you saw, I didn't measure how much went into each compartment, this, but this is what it looks like now. Like this is how cool they are. Of course, they're gonna hopefully rise a little bit more in the oven and then you just like cut off uh, the part that's like coming out so it's flat and they can fit on top of each other. But anyway, this is the current situation. So I'm gonna place them in the oven for the first um, temperature and I'll see how it goes. Okay, so in my oven, uh, it's like hot air and it turns around. So it's making circles. I don't know if you can see. Uh, but now I'll wait 25 minutes first at 140 degrees. Okay, so the cake is in the oven. And now I'm going to start with the buttercream. It's going to be blue later, uh, but not yet. So I find it a little bit hard to find on the internet how much I need for the giant cupcake. Uh, they give me on the uh, plastic bag the recipe for 100 grams of mixture. What I found in at least one recipe was uh, to double it. So I have 200 grams of this buttercream mixture and then to add, uh, well, the double. So not 125 milliliter water, but 250. What you do first is add the water with the mixture, um, stir it, and then uh, leave it for one hour room temperature um, to have it set and then later you add the butter okay so yeah the bottom part of the cake is going to be dressed up with fondant or at least i'm going to attempt to try and do that um of course you can also add buttercream to the base of the cake but i actually always have fondant um so we'll see how that goes so i'm going to have 200 grams of this Smells very good. Yes, 201. This is a very funny consistency. It's almost like a gel or like a pudding. I'm gonna get some muscles today. Do ik spierballen krijg? That is the hook. I'm just gonna leave it like this um, and then have it set for an hour. Okay, so I just separated 300 grams of butter. Oh, now it's 301. <laughs> it was 300 and I didn't do anything. Okay, so I've just taken the cakes out of the oven. They did sink in a little bit and as you can see, the batter of the base was too much apparently and it dripped over the edge it's not too bad i can just uh, of course later on uh, take it off so now i'm gonna let the cake cool down for about 10 to 15 minutes and then try to get it out uh, but this is what it looks like now this is the current situation it smells really good by the way <laughs> but yeah as you can see more better in there would have been better probably but i can fill it up uh, the space in between the top and the bottom if there's like a little edge in between i can fill it up with buttercream i hope okay the moment of truth Okay, so while the cake is cooling off more, uh, before I'm gonna cut 
cut them and place them on top of each other. I'm gonna try and get the fondant to be like flat so I can fold it over the bottom part. Uh, again, I've never done this before. It already feels pretty soft, so that's good. Okay, so it's pretty soft straight out of the package. I put like a sheet of like baking paper underneath. I'm not quite sure if I should put first like some buttercream on the cake so that the fondant actually sticks on the cake. I think I should. Um, anyway, I have another package because I also need to get like white fondant stars on the buttercream. But I think for the base, I'm gonna need like a whole package or maybe more. Oh. Yeah. Still pretty thick. So I think I might need to make the buttercream first. So if I read it correctly, I first have to mix the butter for like five minutes. I'm just gonna use this one uh, until it's like smooth. And then bit by bit, I'm gonna add in the mixture I just made, uh, which has been setting for at least an hour. And then uh, I'm gonna use the white to just paste on a little bit of the fondant on the cake base and I'm gonna add some food coloring like blue um, so I can make like the roses on top and I really hope I have enough <laughs> So this is what the cream looks like now. First I'm gonna cut the cake. Ooh, I see, whoa. I've lost it. I'm still free here. Have you remained? Okay, so the kids are gonna eat the leftovers. I'm gonna dress up this part. It looks pretty decent. Uh, except that I had to cut off a little bit more because it wasn't even, because I was there's like a line at the table and a thing went in between and I changed the height of the whatever. Uh, so now it's not as cool as it was the first time I cut it, but then it wasn't straight. So now it's straight, but it's not as smooth. But anyway, uh, so here we go. Okay, so let's get the base. Uh, just covered in a little bit of buttercream okay so I don't have the fancy thing that like turns around or like the cool spatulas and stuff so I'm just going to put it just as like glue on there so that the fondant will hopefully stay on there every baker is gonna <laughs> cringe watching this video probably it's just my first attempt at uh, trying a giant cupcake and for all my other smashes my own baker will just provide them the way that she's been she's been doing for the last eight years and I mean for my own kids' birthdays or like for a special occasion I would love making one of these but just not like 10 a week because <laughs> that would drive me crazy and I wouldn't have enough time to do it anyway so I hope it is big enough Oh, I'm ripping it actually. It looks like it's big enough. It might be too thick still. Okay, how am I gonna correct this? I should have rolled it thinner probably. Maybe I should have just rolled it onto the side. I think this will look better in the photos anyway. Now I'm not the both ones when the stars are open. Actually, I'm not gonna cut this one. I'm just gonna put it on there. Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is color the buttercream for the roses on top with this uh, blue food coloring. Uh, it's from Do Dr. Edgar. So I'm just gonna throw a few drops in there. Okay, now we're going to 
now I'm gonna fill up my uh, icing bag, piping bag, and try to make like these like roses. Uh, this is a fabric one, it's reusable. I got it at the Hema. You can boil it clean or like wash it like 95 degrees in your laundry machine with your towels. I don't know. It's like cotton on the outside and then plastic on the inside, and you can change the, um, the top. Okay, so I'm gonna go for this one. So I made icing before with um, like icing shutter, sugar, and butter, but you could still see like the icing sugar in there, and this one is just completely smooth. Have I told you I've never done this before? So now, kids are asleep and it's time to make the star decorations and number one to put on the front and then like the blue fondant and then like a number one sticking out of the cake. This is the example I'm going for. Um, as far as the number one, this is what's normally on my cakes made by my baker. I have like the wooden stick. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna point the camera down so you can actually see uh, what I'm doing and uh, let's make some stars. I know I did something wrong with like the piping of the roses. Um, I may should have twisted it more so it looks more like rose petals instead of like going like this. Instead of like having it look like this mirror pretty much. Um, but that will be for next time. Um, so maybe this video is like on how not to do it and respect your baker because Making a cake requires a lot of work, so pay them a fair price, whatever they're asking, <laughs> because it takes so much time and they have the ingredients and everything. But it's fun to make and I want to make them more often for like just personal occasions here. Uh, I'm also going to set up the decor uh, after I finish with the stars. Uh, that's a good thing when you have a home studio the night before, you can put everything ready for the next morning. Uh, so I'm going to show you that as well. But first, uh, let's make some stars. I can do like different shapes of stars. So I think I'm gonna go for the two smaller ones. This is already thinner and that works better. color the white fondant uh, with gel food colorings and they even have like natural food colorings of course a cutout shape would have been nice but uh, I couldn't find it in the store so yeah if you're making more cakes of course that would be great Maybe it'll just stick by itself, but um, I have some butter in there. Yeah. Okay, so you've actually seen me struggling with the backdrops a little bit. Uh, they're both from the same supplier. Photoachtergronden.nl and it's actually the back side of all their printed backdrops. If you just have it printed on one side, they do like double printed backdrops. So if you just have it printed on one side, the back side of the backdrop will be this gray color, which is great. First I put on my dark gray one, which just has the same light gray on the back. Um, but because it's like rolled up, you kind of like see curves in it. So then I tried this one, which is the blossom backdrop. It actually shows less curves. Um, and it's a little bit longer as well. It's four meters long and two meters long.
of the cake in front of the decor. Looking pretty cute. And I have something fun to show you. Look at this beauty. So someone special made me this. Um, and I think it's absolutely amazing. Would you buy it if I would start selling these? They're so like individually like smoothened and it's like strong solid wood. It just looks amazing. Gorgeous. Okay, so now I'm waiting for my uh, uh, clients to come. I'm just gonna fix one more star because I saw that it was broken. Looking like a garden gnome, but I love I love this uh, suit, garden suit. I don't know. <laughs> We just finished um the little boy was not too eager to eat the cake that's okay um i still got some lovely shots i really liked uh photographing him on the dark wood as well with the new dark wood uh little bench and um yeah i got some lovely shots so i'm gonna go and edit them in the coming days and uh it was just fun to make a cake for the first time like that i'm gonna work on my uh, piping technique and uh, maybe make some more cakes in the future uh, but yeah for most of my smashes I'll still order them from my baker uh, but it was a fun cake to make so yeah how not to do it anyway <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video please like subscribe and leave a comment I love reading your comments and um, yeah hope to see you in the comments you can see me in my next video bye bye